Hello, I'm Cadwin Morris and I'm here today to review Doctor Who The Girl Who Died. Now this is a spoiler heavy review, so if you haven't seen the episode, don't watch this review because it will ruin it for you, okay? Now that being said, let's talk about the good, let's talk about the bad, let's talk about my likes and dislikes. Let's review Doctor Who. So, The Girl Who Died. This episode was written by Jimmy Matheson and Stephen Moffat. And it's interesting. Interesting one. It's a self-contained episode which is also part of a two-parter. Um, which is kind of unusual. A bit, bit, little bit strange, but there we are. You know, It's got a continuing story arc that runs over to the next episode. Um, Doctor Who has always been about an adventure in space and time. And that's what this episode really gives you, is that sort of scope. It starts off in deep space, with Clara being trapped and the Doctor fleeing from a battle fleet, which is always good to start, you know, it sort of hits the ground running and just keeps going. Then you land on Earth. Again. Um, I understand why. I understand why they, they've, they've gone with Earth. It's, it's easier on the production, let's be fair. It's much easier to do Earth than it is to do a, a, an alien planet. But had these been aliens on an alien planet, maybe it would have made for a better story, I don't know. Uh, the story overall was reasonable. It was, a, it was a reasonable story. One of the things that Doctor Who does very well is alien invasion stories. Mainly because with most sci-fi alien invasion stories tend to happen in the 20th or 21st century with Doctor Who, Doctor Who tends to say that alien invasions have always happened you know just look at um, uh, what's, the, what's the name of the, the one in Paris, what's it called? City of Death City of Death, I mean alien invasions were happening at the start you know when, when the dinosaurs were still around so this story is a continuation of that sort of thing you know where aliens have invaded throughout time and at this point they decide to invade during the Viking era. Um, it's a little bit sort of outlander I, I felt, a little bit, but that was quickly dismissed, that was quickly washed away. Uh, this episode also stars Maisie Williams who you'll all know from Game of Thrones. I'm going to come around to that in a little bit, but overall she done a pretty good job. I, I, I felt that uh, you know she was obviously living up to her talent that she's obviously earned and her skill that she's achieved by being on Game of Thrones. Solid performance all around, but I, I will get back to her, her character in a little bit. Uh, first things first, those damn sonic glasses. Snap, hurrah, get them out of here. They are awful. I, I've... I've gone from being on the fence to being I don't like them and they get snapped straight away and it's like, oh, thankfully. It's, it's, I'm, I'm now firmly believe that they're a silly idea and I was Doctor Who has a little bit of silliness to it, they, 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 they take the pee. Um, obviously dealing with Vikings, now this is where the production I believe kind of, I'm not going to say it falls down because Doctor Who do, does something very well and has to do backyard stories which this is what that is, okay, this is a backyard story it looks and feels like it was filmed in somebody's back garden um, and that is in turn partly responsible due to the camera work so First things first, let's talk about the alien threat, which is Odin, or somebody claiming to be Odin. Now, this is where the production goes off a little bit, because we've seen Thor, and we've seen a good interpretation of Odin. We know roughly what we an idea of Odin looks like, and is represented very, very well. A truth is played by Anthony Hopkins in Thor, but it's a good example of Odin. This... I know it's not really Odin and it, it's, it's a, a, a hologram, but <sighs> due to the way that he, he's made and due to the way that the character's made up, 
kind of looks a bit more like James Hook than Odin. Uh, there's something very pantomime about the, the, the guy as Odin. Um, the other thing, again, is the fact that Maisie Williams is in this production. It's not her fault whatsoever, but it does continually remind you how good the production values are on Game of Thrones. Uh, and that's why this one feels like a backyard production. It's because it's, it's literally... There's no sense of scale to this episode. There's absolutely no sense of scale. And again, this comes down to the camera work. You get this opening pan of the village, this really short opening crane shot where you get to see like two houses. And after that, almost every single shot in this episode is shot from the waist up. Everything is shot in either mid or close up. Pr pretty much like I'm being shot right now. It's, it's pretty much this throughout the entire episode. Uh, except for when it, you, you see Odin, then, it, then it's right up in his face. Uh, so it's mid and close up. You get no sense of scale from that. Now, okay, they probably didn't have the effects to make it broader, make a larger village, but uh, the, you know, and the budget was probably uh, not there for it anyway, because it's probably a lower budget episode anyway. But uh, the way it was shot, by shooting it close up all the time, you can't see the effort that they've gone to to create this village, to create this town. You only ever get to really see one house, to be honest with you. And for all I know, it's the same house repeated over and over, and just doubling as other buildings. Um, no, they did have the, an interesting design for the inside of the hall. Uh, I felt that, that that was probably a location, more than a set. Um, but it was, again, it's it due to the camera work. The camera work, the cinematography in this episode was just not up to par. It really wasn't. Um, it, it, the costumes looked okay, but they looked like a BBC costume department. Uh, they, they Everything was sort of um, new leather, nothing scuffed. Um, it, it was, it, everything looked like it was a, a production as opposed to a, a real life thing. There were better examples here and there, like for example some of the helmets were dinged up, but you can see that the swords had never been used. They, they, they were brand new, shiny. Whoever made them didn't want them to clang. Um, and then we get into the plot then, which is that the, this alien is draining people of testosterone and is essentially drinking it. Um, that's not, that's really, really not a good plot. I mean, you know, that's, that's not a good villain. It, 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 that's a bad villain right there. I mean, and I don't mean bad as in, oh no, he's a bad guy. I mean, that's crap. You know, when the villain abducts people and drains them to drink their testosterone, it, it's not quite Count Dracula, if you see what I'm saying. Um, there were more interesting dynamics with Dracula. There's more interesting things going on. With this Odin character, I, 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 I don't know. It was just really, really bad. But anyway, Clara tries to talk him out of the invasion and she's almost very successful which is where she steps up to the play and it's her, Clara and uh, Maisie Williams in the scene and Maisie sets off or triggers a war. Um, I would have said battle. I wouldn't have said war. I would have said battle. You know, there, were, there, were, there was ten people fighting ten people. It, it, that's not a war. That's a punch up in a rugby club. Um, so, Clara stepping up again, it does show her progression as the, of, of the character of Clara Oswald, but I do feel that she is starting to get ahead of the Doctor. Maybe at some point the Doctor's going to rein her back in. Hopefully, anyway, that's my, my thoughts, is, is that you know she, the Doctor's going to realise that she is getting too far ahead of herself. Um, so, I, I kind of... I was kind of on the fence as well about the pacing of this episode. Because, yes, I knew it was going to be a two-parter, but I knew that this was also going to be self-contained, that the next episode has absolutely, aside from Maisie Williams' character, the, the, the story here and now, with the Vikings ends here and now. So, 
this episode starts off quick, grinds to a halt, and then starts to climb in in speed. And there are some moments where I felt like you know you need to be moving this along a bit better, moving it along a bit faster, moving it along. But then there's this moment where the doctor has this debate over whether or not he should help or not. And for good or bad reasons, maybe that should have played out a little bit earlier in the episode, but it was a valued moment at that time. It was really sort of, you need to focus here. This is an important beat for the Doctor, and and they, and they did. They focused on it, and I felt that it was, a, it was a good moment. Now, truth be told, whilst I enjoyed the back and forth between the Doctor and Clara, He's been around long enough to have already had this debate before in a previous incarnation. I'm fairly sure he would have already reached this point. I'm sure he, he's crossed this line before as to whether or not to interfere. And it's Clara talking him into helping. Really? Really? Clara has to talk the doctor in to stop in an alien invasion? Right, now you've just switched the character. Now you've just changed the character. The entire, the, the past 50 years of the Doctor have just been switched like that. Like a light switch. You know, you, for the past 50 years you haven't been able to stop him from interfering. And now you have to convince him. It's, it goes against the characteristics. Now whilst it was a great little back and forth between the Doctor and Clara, mainly do less to do with the dialogue and more to do with the acting performances going on. Now the other thing that uh, I took from this episode was uh, that the way the Doctor beat the bad guy was to uh, do what he always does which is to do something that you weren't going to see coming, that you weren't going to expect and to bamboozle them into submission which is which is again what happens you know he uses their own uh, weapons against them and ends up defeating the bad guys there's you know like I said it's a self-contained episode it, it, it's one of those stories whereby it's such a tedious little bad guy that it, it really doesn't matter so the importance of this episode is probably more placed on Maisie Williams's character than anything else. This was all just setting up her character. She dies and the Doctor brings her back because that's what the Doctor does. That's what the Doctor can do. Really? He can he can he can bring back the dead now. He he I mean I, I guess you know there's nothing to say that you know he can't. I'm just thinking of other companions that he's lost and I'm not so sure he wouldn't have used that trick before. But anyway, you know, besides that, 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 that aside, you know, she is, Maisie Williams has now become Captain Jack Harkness and um, can't die. She's immortal. There we are. Hurrah. She's, she's an immortal that cannot die. Now this moment was actually brilliant. The illustration of her immortality I thought was flawless. I didn't much like the visual effects throughout this episode because it looked to me like the mountain side and everything would be added in via Terrigen, which is a pretty bloody good package. I've used it myself. It's free out there for, for anybody. But um, I, I don't believe that the, that there's the, the backgrounds were... Uh, entirely convincing but uh, this moment where time is going by and you see the stars spinning and and you see the streaks as the sun's going across the sky I thought it was a brilliant brilliant little uh, trick for illustrating time I'm not gonna go nuts over it but it, I thought it was uh, it looked beautiful um, so we get to the end of the episode and she's passed through time she's lived for however many years and that's pretty much where we leave this episode. So, what do I think of this episode overall? Well, it started off fun, but then it became boring. And then it became more about Clara and Clara convincing the Doctor. And I don't like that. I don't believe you need to convince the Doctor. Again, the story seemed to surround Maisie Williams' character and... 
again, the biggest problem with this episode was the cinematography. The, the camera work in this episode was, I'm not going to say shoddy, but it was whoever filmed this has only ever filmed TV, I believe. I mean, I, I, you know, I could be wrong, I might have to go back and check, but I would speculate that they've only ever done TV. Maybe they might have done adverts as well, but I wouldn't have said that they've done a feature film because they just didn't have that scope. And maybe that's the fault of the cinematographer, maybe that's the fault of the director, but it just did not look impressive. Um, also, again, the, the plot was... The plot was substandard. I'm not going to say it went back to its usual grind because at least it was trying something a little bit different in the character of the Doctor and Maisie. Good for the attempt, but this story is a story that we've heard before from the Doctor, okay? This was like the one with Matt Smith where the, the western uh, town was invaded by uh, a cybernetic cowboy or you know, go back further and, you know, horror fan rock where a 19th century uh, lighthouse is invaded by aliens. It was that plot. It was, it was that plot. That was, that was the backfill to this story. Uh, so not much in the way of originality there. Um, again, Maisie Williams has become Captain Jack. Not really original there. So, but it's what they do going forward now. This is the setup for the next series, for the next few episodes, I would assume. And what do I think of this episode overall, in points wise? I'm gonna give it a six point five out of ten. It, 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 it looked cheap. It looked subpar. It didn't have a great plot. It dragged along for the first 20, 25 minutes. And when it finally got going, uh, it was over. So, uh, there you go. There's not a lot I can say to this because obviously we're waiting for more. This is a build story, so we're obviously waiting for more. And there it is. 6.5 out of 10. What did you think of this episode of Doctor Who? Did you like it? Am I wrong in its in what I've said with about the, the, the story? Did you find it more interesting than I did? Because I, I honestly... Like I said, I was bored for the first 20 minutes. Uh, what do you think about Clara's role in the show now? Has she, you know, overstepped the mark? Anyway, that's it from me. Uh, and until the next review, I'll see you later, guys.